I'm Shep Hyken, and here's what's coming up on this episode of Be Amazing or Go Home. Disrupting an entire industry. Are you looking to reach the next level of delivering an amazing customer experience? We have the answer, plus six strategies you can use to stand out from your competition. Creating an amazing culture. How can you put into action the habits of an amazing lifestyle? Well, Ron Cameron shares how he built an award-winning culture with his employees at his business, Knowledgely. Crafting your personal motto. Barbara Archer tells us how a customer-centric approach in the financial planning industry is delivering amazing results for her and her clients. And made to measure the ultimate example of personalizing the customer's experience. Tom James Company explains how they've been dressing for success for more than 50 years. So, are you ready to be amazing? Well, stay tuned for all of this and more coming up next on Be Amazing or Go Home. Hello, I'm Shep Hyken, and this is Be Amazing or Go Home, the show dedicated to take you from average to amazing. And we begin with a question on the minds of everyone looking to take their life to the next level. How can you disrupt your competition and maybe even an entire industry? And the answer is be convenient. Whether you're trying to outservice a competitor or disrupt an entire industry, creating less friction and being more convenient for your customers should be your strategy. When you raise the convenience bar, you create the next level of amazing customer experience. Convenience is king. Customers will pay for convenience and they'll choose to do more business over time with the people and companies that make their lives more convenient. There are six areas of convenience, and these concepts have disrupted direct competition, and in some cases, as I mentioned, even entire industries. The one company that pushes the envelope on all six of these areas is Amazon, which in my opinion is the most convenient company on the planet to do business with. And once you understand what it does, you can start to see the possibility of how you can do it in your business. So here are the six compelling strategies that will fuel your plan to create a focus on convenience for your customers with examples of how Amazon uses these strategies. Number one, reducing friction. Just be easier to do business with. This is the overarching strategy, and there are countless ways that Amazon is more convenient, and one of my favorites is the one-click ordering. Once you're set up in their system, as you're browsing the website and find something you want to purchase, just click once, and guess what? It's on its way. It doesn't get much easier than that. Number two, technology. The latest app or technology that makes doing business with you easy. Now, Amazon has leveraged technology to make its customers' lives easier. It offers the Kindle Reader for eBooks and, of course, the Echo and Alexa's AI solution. Then there's the Dash button. This button is like a small doorbell that when you push it, it automatically orders whatever it's programmed to order. For example, you can have a Dash button in the laundry room. When you're running low on detergent, push the dash button and the detergent is ordered and shipped to your home. You don't even need to open your computer. Number three, self-service. Quick and easy to do-it-yourself solutions for service and any other offering that makes the experience easier. Amazon provides user-friendly self-service options for support, tracking orders, shipping, and much more. Its new grocery store, Amazon Go, allows customers to just walk into a store, pick up the items that they want, and then just walk out. They've gone beyond self-service checkout lanes. You just get what you want and go. Number four, subscription. The product or service that the company sells just shows up when it's supposed to. Now, Amazon has an option for automatically delivering certain items, which it calls subscribe and save. For example, you might go to the store every month for a large box of diapers. Well, Amazon just makes it easier for you. Set it up as a subscription, and every month, the diapers will just show up at your doorstep. Number five, delivery. Don't make the customer pick it up. Take it to them. 
Now, the idea of delivery is part of what put Amazon on the map. Delivery options have been reduced to less than two hours in many locations for many items. Amazon is also developing Prime Air, which is designed to get packages to customers in 30 minutes or less using drones. And finally, number six, access. Are your locations and hours of operation designed to make life easier for you and your customers? Amazon is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can order whatever you want, whenever you want, and it's building a distribution network of warehouses that's streamlining its operation, all with the idea that it needs to deliver what the customer wants as quickly as possible. Now, these six strategies will help leverage convenience as a powerful way to differentiate yourself from your competition. The value proposition is both simple and profound. When you reduce friction and make it easier for your customers to do business with you, they'll reward you with their money, their loyalty, and their referrals. Now, go out there and not just be amazing, but be more convenient. Creating a customer-focused culture within your business is about philosophy and not policy because it's important to hire the right people and train them to that philosophy. Ron Cameron created an award-winning culture in his business and joins us here in the studio to discuss how he has become amazing, how his company, Knowledge Lake, has become amazing. Ron, welcome to the show, buddy. Thanks, Shep. Thanks. Always great to be here. And, and you've been a friend of mine for years, and I said, man, I've got to get you on here because... What you've done with Knowledge Lake is amazing. So quick little background, how long ago did it start? Yeah, 18 years, 2001. 18 it's years, run. and you've won award after award for the best place to work. We yes? have, yeah. we have, yes. And there's gotta be a secret behind that. And it's not like, oh, it's easy, we just did it. You had a process, something in mind. Tell us well, about Well, you know, there's a lot of things to it. It's not just one thing, but I, I, would, I would encourage everyone out there to create a culture in your business that's on purpose. You know, there's so many people, so many other business leaders that both of us know that business just happens to them. It happens day to day, mm -hmm. and they sort of blindly lead you know, customer to customer, deal to deal, whatever they do, and they don't purposely create a culture. And that's what I would say at Knowledge Lake in a nutshell, uh, what we've done. We've, yeah. we've set out to build a culture, and that's what we do every day. So they say success doesn't happen by accident. There's definitely a plan. So tell us about some of the ideas and strategies you put in the place to okay. create that culture. Because I know you have uh, your personal time off policies. You have an amazing incentive. You don't just take a few people on a trip. You take everybody yeah. on the trip. I mean, incredible uh, well, yeah. things to build this culture that make people want to come to work at Knowledge sure. Lake. Well, I can give you a few a few of the highlights, and it's a it's a it's a pretty deep process that starts with first, you know, being a, a, a tribe member at Knowledge Lake is a very exclusive thing. We we don't just hire anybody, okay? And when so I couldn't get a job there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we want uh, we want people to think that being part of our team is a, is a is a very big deal. So how do you do it? Uh, well, by first off, we don't hire. We we hire like one out of every ten. That, okay. we, uh, that we take a look at, mm -hmm. but then, but then, and by the way, you narrow down the ten from probably hundreds. We do before they even well, walk a, in the absolutely. door. Absolutely. Okay. But, and we we let them know first up. You know, working at Knowledge Lake is not for everyone. It's not for the faint of heart. It, there comes with you know we pay top of market. We pay better than all of our competitors. That's how we get the very best people. Mm -hmm. Everybody but, that works at Knowledge Lake is a rock star. But there is a point in time where the best salary does not equal does happiness. Not. That's exactly and right. And people could leave. And you know why, you know why most people uh, eventually find satisfaction or they don't? They, they find satisfaction through having a really, really good manager that expects top performance. And then when they perform, they get rewarded. And that makes them feel good. makes them feel like they've accomplished something. And what's that reward? Uh, that rewards a lot of things. You know, we took, uh, it's been a few years ago, we took 350 people. We shut the whole company down and went to Cancun uh, for a week. I wish I could have been on that trip. <laughs> <laughs> you invited me to this sales meeting in St. Charles, Missouri, but you didn't invite me to Cancun. So, but you know, we all, we all win or lose together is what mm -hmm. I say. We're, we're a team. And uh, anyway, I always say we're the Navy SEALs of ECM, which means that not everybody can be one. It's really difficult. But, you know, we, we work together. We win together. We lose together. We are a team together. So when somebody comes to work there, I mean, you're paying them well. What do you expect? They, they don't go home at 5 o'clock. They do it till the job is done. I mean, give me some examples of what your people are doing. Absolutely. We expect the job to be done. Mm -hmm. and, you know, okay. One, that's that's yeah, perfect. And, yeah. 
you know, and I learned from mm -hmm. a good uh, friend of mine, which is you, that, you know, we, we not only expect a lot, but we expect people to make decisions, okay? When, when a customer has a challenge, okay, we empower people to actually fix it. Okay? It's not just, hey, well, let me talk to somebody or let me talk to my boss. No, we expect people to solve our customers' challenges right then, and we empower them to do so. That's important. Uh, so, I mean, just real quick, one or two quick examples of, you know, how do you create this workplace culture that anybody could, yeah. could do? Well, a couple of things. One, we just create the best environment, and that's a simple thing. You know, you don't, it doesn't take anything to create a great office. Mm -hmm. So, so you're talking about space-wise, or you're yeah. talking about just making it feel right, talking about the right furniture? You know, all the, anything you need to drink or eat or anything's mm -hmm. available all the time. What that does is it encourages, we don't, we don't chain anybody to their desk, but I, I walked through there last night as I was leaving like at 7.45 p.m. We had an office full of people still there writing software, and they, nobody knew that. Okay, they're not getting any extra money. There's no extra things, but that's people, people want to work hard. They're taking such pride, they, they want yes. to do the job, and you reward them well, not just financially, but making right. them feel like they're part of something bigger the than offices, just the job they're doing. Our office is magnificent, and we, we spend a lot of money on it, but you know what? No matter what you spend on an office, you'll never spend more than you spend on people's salaries. Mm. So it's about taking care of the people you're spending the money on, right? Yep. All right. One final question, and it's always my one thing question. Is there one thing you want to emphasize or give us a nugget of information you want our viewers yeah, to I've hear a, from you? I spent a long time studying the Navy SEAL program. Mm. And you know, there's some real gems of information in there, but there's a, you know, at the at this fundamental level of why the Navy SEAL uh, teams work is because people will perform better to not let their team down than they will perform for themselves. So, and that's, ah. that's most emphasized recently, and I've learned a lot by a recent book that I read about a year ago called Tribal Leadership by Dave Logan. Great book. And, you know, Tribal Leadership, it's, it's a great book. You should pick it up, and, and everyone should pick it up and read it if they're trying to get better. But at the, at the end of the day, it's, it's a very similar message to what the Navy SEALs have been operating on for decades, wow. which is people will work better, will work harder, and will work smarter at, to help their team than they will to help themselves. So All right. That's what we do to words of wisdom success. from an award winning company. <laughs> Thanks, Ron, for stopping by Jeff, and being amazing. It's time now for this week's amazing app. And the first words you see when you go to this website reads the following Scheduling sucks. Our ridiculously efficient artificial intelligence software solves the hassle of meeting scheduling. X.AI eases the pain of scheduling across your entire company, no matter your type of business and no matter the type of meeting. The AI assistants named Amy and Andrew are constructed to handle complicated schedules and are constantly learning how to better work with you. When I first experienced a client using this digital scheduling assistant, I thought that I was dealing with a real person. I had no idea that it was AI. The X.AI assistants are also built with many different skills to schedule meetings wherever work gets done, including in your inbox. Just CC the AI assistants to schedule a meeting. No back and forth. On your Slack, you can set something up without interrupting the flow of conversation. On your web page, X.AI gives you a personalized web page that lets guests book time with you at the click of a button. And in your calendar, you can click the reschedule link in the invite where plans change at the very last minute. The AI assistants, Amy and Andrew, understand natural language and their skills give you the ability to set up, reschedule or cancel meetings upon request, add reminder meetings to your calendar, work with your guest human assistant, understand and convert time zones for all parties and much, much more. X.AI works for everyone, including entrepreneurs, startups, and enterprise-sized companies. A company driven to solve the problem of manually scheduling meetings, combining the power of human intelligence with the power of human empathy. X.AI is this week's amazing app. There's a trend in the financial planning industry moving from a product-centric approach to a customer-centric approach, and Barbara Archer is one of the most influential wealth advisors 
leading the effort. Barbara has been successful for decades, building relationships with trust and her clients. Barbara Archer from Hightower Wealth Advisors joins us in the studio. Hey, Barbara, nice to see you. Good to see you, Chef. So it says decades, and I know that when we talked just before the show, you said uh, you've been doing this since 1983. That's 35 years, and I'm thinking, wow, she started when she was about 12 years old. And I'm holding you to it. All right, yep, good, good. good. But seriously, 35 years, and you've had clients for 35 years. Yes, I have my very first client still. Wow. Close to my heart. And I can imagine that's special. So the question is, and this is big, be amazing or go home. You're obviously being amazing, or else your clients would have said, I'm going home to someone else. What have you done to uh, create this confidence and this trust that your clients have with you? Now, it's not about, hey, I'm successful in the financial services industry. We'll assume that you're, you're good at what you do. But holding on to clients for that long is not an easy thing to do. Well, thank you for asking, because I will tell you, I heard you mention right in the beginning of the show that you said it's a trend to go from products to customers. Well, our clients have always been, we've always been client-centric. So my practice was devised and built around that client. And because we've done this for over 35 years, what we have done is put together a tried and true process. And that process, we believe, helps our clients be more successful. And that process is very simple. Number one, we start out by asking very difficult and hard questions. And so those hard questions allow us to understand where the client is today. So it, we ask for data, we ask for information, um, we put together kind of a, a vision of what that person is today and their families and their needs today. Then we want to know what their goals are. After they tell us their goals, we go through and say, what are the realistic goals? What can we achieve? What are your priorities? On top of that, we then step back and we build out an action plan. When we have that action plan, we have a conversation. Can you stick to the plan? That's is the this, toughest part. It is the tough part. Because the market does strange things does. at strange times. And if you stay with it long term, it usually works out to what your plan is. But I do have to ask, um, in some of these questions, you talk about your process. You talk about difficult questions. Mm -hmm. Give me an example of what a difficult question is. Is there anyone else in your family besides perhaps a, spou a spouse or a child that you may have to support? Meaning? A sibling. Sibling. A um, parent. A parent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you may want to become a foster parent. So people have different dreams and goals and sometimes life comes at us sideways and you go, wow, I wasn't planning on that. Yeah. Another question is, have you thought about early retirement? Mm -hmm. Unintentional early retirement. There's a Morningstar report, most people think 65, I'll be, get on Medicare, I'll plan for that. The average age now is 61. For retirement. For retirement, mm -hmm. unintentional retirement. Unintentional. And not only that, people are living longer. Yes. So the original concept of retiring and having enough savings was maybe you needed another 10 years. Well, today you need 20, 30 years. Correct. People are living into their 90s and 100s. So they retire at age 65 or whatever. Well, when you and your wife are both 65, mm -hmm. I know it's years from now. Years. Years and now. Years, years from now. <laughs> but whenever that does occur, there's mm -hmm. a 25% chance that one of you will see their 90th birthday. Wow, that's pretty good. Okay. So I better be prepared to, if I do my math right, uh, hit it for another 25 years worth of, of income. Absolutely. Yeah. And one of the things that people often fail to plan for is health care. Mm -hmm. um, so when you look at what is the average health care cost after retirement, it's about 280000 so wow. that's a lot of dollars. Right. And here's what I've learned. And I'm going to ask, do you client. know what the average person retires with? Is it 280000 Is it enough to take them into their late no, years? No, the average retirement savings in the United States is about $84,000. Wow. So they've got, and that's, that, this is just health care. You still have to eat. Right. and pay rent right. or own a place and utility bills and, and things like that. So well, the health care, when most people believe they go to Medicare, they say, well, it's free. Well, it's not free. Mm -hmm. A is free, but you pay for B, and then you have a supplemental care plan, and then you have deductibles and co-pays. So people get surprised. So the biggest thing, though, is you build this trust by asking the right questions, yeah. uh, by sticking to the plan and sticking to the process. 
creating great relationships through that confidence and trust. And obviously, I think you have a personality that is engaging. It, it, so we're, we're down to the end here. If there's one thing you can think of that you'd like to share with our viewers, and maybe it's something you want to emphasize, what would it be? If your advisor is not asking you difficult questions, find a new advisor. Ah, uh, got it. Because that means they're interested in just getting the customer, not just keeping and building the relationship with the customer. Right. Outstanding. That's Barbara Archer. She is in the studio today talking about how she builds amazing relationships with her customers. Thanks for coming in. Great Thank to you. have you here. Tom James Company exemplifies the process of convenience and personalization for all of their clients. From consultation to delivery, Tom James Company provides the ultimate customer service in the custom clothing industry. So we sat down with Ben Lawler, a clothier from Tom James, and went through all the ways Tom James is doing amazing things for their customers and clients. Tom James Company was founded in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, 1966. We started with four guys. Today we have 109 offices across the globe. We're in all three aspects of the industry. So we're in retail, wholesale, and manufacturing. As a company, we're vertically integrated. So what that means is we cut out the cost of the middleman, and we bring that value directly to our customers. Step number one is that consultation. Right, so that's really getting to know the client, their likes, their dislikes, uh, where they go, what they do, who they see. Ultimately, it's putting together a plan. Number two is going to be style. You know, finding out what that uh, what that person is uh, is into. Ultimately, it should be a reflection of their personality. Step number three is going to be the tailoring process. Right, so 27 measurements, top to bottom. So we're getting everything down to the quarter inch. After we have those measurements, we send those to our factory, right, and we're getting a fit that's just, uh, that's just absolutely spot on. You know, much different than something that you would find off the rack. And then finally, it's the uh, delivery process, right? So after we've uh, had that consultation, we figure out the style and the fit, we come in on the back end for that delivery. And ultimately, we want it to be a world-class experience for the client. Tom James Company shows up ready to amaze by utilizing the three S's, state, story, and strategy. So first and foremost, it's having that, that positive energy state going in. You know, we don't want to go in and meet with a client where we're, you know, just kind of down and going through the motions. We want to come in at that highest energy state. Story, that's knowing specifically what we're going to be talking about with that client. You know, as opposed to just going through the motions, having a plan, having a strategy, which is part number three. So we put together a strategy for that client where uh, they're properly attired for any occasion, whether it's business, casual, social, or formal. So Tom James uh, exemplifies convenience by coming right to the customer, taking all the time and hassle out of going to the store. What Tom James does ties beautifully with the convenience revolution. You know, this day and age, uh, retail is changing, right? And we want to be uh, relevant. We want to stay with the time. So Tom James uh, goes out to the client um, and again, makes it an experience where the customer just, just absolutely loves it, right? Where we're going to come in, we're going to pick out fabric, we're going to take a full set of measurements, ultimately bring it back to the client by taking the time and hassle out of going to the store. The personalization process is really tailoring that experience to that particular client. You know, everything from picking out the lining on the inside to putting a name label, um, you know, the contrasting stitch on the buttonhole, just making it uh, unique. And again, something that's different than you would just find off the rack. You know, we always like to say off the rack, it's, uh, it's one size fits none. Tom James is an amazing company, and I can personally testify to that because I'm one of their clients. And I will tell you that they not only have a great product and they not only deliver a great customer service experience, but they add something that we talked about at the beginning of the show, and that is the whole concept of convenience. They come to you. It couldn't be easier, whether it's in your home or in your office. One of their people come to you, they measure, they make sure it's right, they bring it to you to try on the clothing once you get it. All I can tell you is they're not only an amazing company, they're a convenient company. It's time now to hear from you and time to ask Shep. Find me on Twitter. My handle is at Hiken. And don't forget to use the hashtag AskShep. Let's begin. 
David Armstrong is a professional photographer, and this is what he tweets. I just got my first negative review online, and I'm not sure what to do. Any suggestions? Well, the first suggestion is respond and respond quickly. You should respond to all negative reviews and positive reviews because your customers want to hear from you. But with a negative review, you don't want to have an argument online. So go to the direct message forum of whatever that review site is, handle the problem, and then come back on and say, thanks for letting me take care of you. In the perfect world, that customer is going to come back and say, yes, you're great. I'm glad I let you know there was a problem. So respond quickly move offline, come back on, make it full circle. Now, let's hear from Jessica Bush, who owns an online candy store, and this is what she tweets. My company is starting to build a chat bot for answering our customers' questions. I'm worried about losing touch with our customers. What's your opinion of chat bots? Well, I love chatbots, and it's pretty standard today that customers will deal with and accept that there's a chatbot. However, my suggestion is to focus on just the simple and basic questions, such as, hey, I want to change my credit card, or I need to change my uh, mailing address, or can you please check on an order for me? Anything more complicated than that, make sure there's human backup immediately available to take care of that customer. Finally, we have Gina Flores, and she manages a grocery store, and this is what she tweets. I'm having a meeting with my team, and I want to include a discussion on customer service. Can you share one idea or tip that can help us get the discussion started? Well, this is my favorite idea to do at a meeting, and that is ask everybody to bring an example of when they've created a positive customer experience for one of their customers. And by the way, that can be an outside customer, somebody that pays you for your goods and service, or an internal customer, somebody that you support internally. But just type out, or not type out, just hand write out on an index card, shouldn't be more than two or three sentences, the example of when you've created that great service. Ask all of the employees to come with their index cards and have them go around and share. And what happens is you'll be amazed what people say good service is all about. Something as simple as, hey, I just responded quickly to somebody's email and they were so impressed. To something big, if there was some type of a catastrophe and you had to truly go above and beyond. The bottom line is that everybody's bringing an example of when they've created a good service experience to the person they work with or do business with and they're sharing it and it makes people very aware of the service that they create. So, are you ready to be amazing? Find me on Twitter, and again, the handle is at Hiken. And don't forget to use that hashtag, AskShep, to ask me your question and share your amazing story. Time now for this week's amazing quote, and it comes from Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart. There is only one boss, the customer. Customers can fire everybody in the company, from the chairman on down, simply by spending their money somewhere else. It's all about focusing on the customer, not just the operation. That means every decision that is made has the customer in mind. Too many times we get hung up on teaching people the specific things necessary to do their jobs, but we miss teaching the people skills. And those skills can help develop a mindset, a customer-focused mindset that encompasses all the how-to training, the positive attitude, and an understanding of the reason behind a relentless effort to deliver an amazing customer experience. So with that in mind, here are five concepts that will help create the customer-focused mindset. Number one, the desire to take care of people. Even after basic customer service training, employees may understand the techniques to deliver service, but don't get the essence. A customer-focused mindset includes the desire to serve. Number two, being in the moment. This is realizing when you're delivering a positive experience. People must be conscious of what they're doing and always looking for ways to make it better. Number three, the line in the sand. An environment that fosters a customer-focused mindset empowers people to do what's necessary to take care of the customer without crossing the line. Teach your employees how far that they can go to take care of their customers. Number four, always learning. The best of the best are continuous learners, and not just about their own products and services. They learn about competitors, what's the latest and greatest in the industry, and they understand how to talk to customers the right way. And finally, number five, 
recognizing the awesome responsibility. At any given time, one employee has the responsibility to deliver a customer experience that is in alignment with your vision. This one person represents your brand and all of his or her fellow employees. The best companies create policies and procedures that are customer focused, not operations focused. And customer focused companies train all of their people to the culture. You see, customer service is not a department. It's a philosophy to be embraced by everyone in the organization, from the CEO to the most recently hired employee. Well, that wraps up this edition of Be Amazing or Go Home. Remember, you can find me on Twitter. My handle is at Hyken. And don't forget to use the hashtag AskShep to post your question or share your story. Thanks for tuning in. This is Shep Hyken reminding you to always be amazing.